Hi everyone. May you be inspired, learn something new, or simply relax while watching. This is the dried result from the my second last painting um, and the very first wrecker ring that I did in the blues on the square canvas. So you can see there it looks great, it's dried wonderfully but let me just show you in the light. Isn't that awesome? I love how when I use these specific paints, the turquoise in this one, it has a matte finish and it really stands out with the in between the gloss finish. So it looks really effective, but that is a um, an effect that gets lost once it's resined or uh, varnished at the end. But I do like to see that. So I love how these lines turned out. Oop. And yeah, so that's the my first Wrecker Ring dried result. So now let's have a look at the second one, which was, I felt like I really wrecked it once I saw the photo of how it looked once I poured it out. Uh, so you can see all the wood texture in this one through the pour. That is how thin the paint dries. Um, even with all the additives we add to it, you can still see that texture. So if I were going to finish this, again, stunning lines, beautiful colours, I would resin it. But if you notice there, I said if I was going to finish it, that's because I had a little visitor land in my painting and took a bit of a wander. So this one will be sanded back and reused. So that's my second recurring on a round. So just because I thought um, I did the square, I've done the round, I wonder if we go larger and rectangular like what would that take and how does that affect how it looks in the final result so you can see here I've got a whole bunch of greens to my right so this one is going to be green and that little brown there um, that was actually a combination of all the colors from the round pour so the red, yellow, white and black and it came up with this beautiful, I think it's like a burnt sienna. Um, it's just stunning, I thought that would look really nice and warm in between those layers of the, of the green. So just as you can see, trying to pour them down the side, I want them layered for this one again. Um, and not to mix too much as I squirt them into each other in the cup. So this canvas is a 16 by 20. So I'm using a huge red cup. I don't actually know how much it holds, but I will find out. And note that down in the description box below, because I found I had a really... Pretty much a perfect amount of paint for this size canvas. So that looks awesome. So, yep. Oh, sorry about the lighting there. Not quite sure what happened. So I'm just going to clear some space and begin Wrecker Ring number three. So because the cup was very full, when I first started, I just poured it straight out and then started doing the swirl technique. <coughs> Excuse me. See, those colors look amazing. I'm so excited just looking at that, <laughs> that this is going to be beautiful. It's because, yeah, sorry, backtracking. So I just poured it out before doing the swirl technique because um, I know that most of those outer layers, the paint is going to roll over each itself 
as we tilt it and spread it around the canvas. So now I just moved it around before wrecking it, what you can see here, creating these lines through the pattern. Uh, just based on the fact that it is a larger canvas and it is a rectangular shape. So knowing that I had to go more left and right than up and down, I moved it around before the wrecking. And now we'll see how tilting it and stretching it out really goes. I am just pushing it right to the point where it tilt, um, tilts, uh, just runs over the edge and coming back. So I am trying to keep at this point still enough paint on the canvas to do any more tilting if necessary. And yet there's, um, but even if I liked what it is now, there's not too much paint on there that it would crack or turn out not so great. And there's a good example of different areas of the painting, how the paint mixes. So, all right, so I was, just while that was sitting there and seeing if any reactions happen, um, I felt like there was too much brown on one side so I wanted to tilt that off and too much green on the other side so unfortunately my camera did cut off while I was tilting through these next stages so you don't see all of that there um, but then I realized when I went to grab the phone to do the close-up so my biggest apologies on that um, but that's what happened there so I certainly had enough paint so I was really happy with that and the colors and the lines were beautiful so here's a close-up really happy with the contrast between the darker greens and the lighter shades um, but I still feel like perhaps um, an even bigger contrast would have been amazing. So you can see as we go across this section, there's that tinge of brown in there. Kind of gave it a little bit of a muddy appearance, but there it looked really like strong and solid. And the way it outlines these these lines and this section I think it was stunning it was really good use of a little bit extra paint left over and what I could scrape off the table for that brown so still not a hundred percent sure how I feel about record rings um, but for that I love that shot <laughs> so there we have it so now we have the dried painting and if you're liking these videos please subscribe give me a thumbs up leave me a comment below and share it with others all of that really helps to support and encourage the channel growth and it really does mean so much to me and i appreciate it so much so this is how it looks dry. All right. There's that beautiful effect in the middle. All right, so let's have a look at them now, going from the green rectangle to the red round and then the blue square awesome i hope you've enjoyed that thank you so much for being here be kind be creative and be fabulous bye